This week on the podcast, Carrie and I are getting ready to go to Disneyland. That's right, we leave in just a few days. Do you think we're ready for this epic adventure? But first, we're talking about two best friends that we're starting to think maybe resemble us a little bit. Stay tuned to hear what we're talking about. You're listening to the Pixie Dust Fan Podcast. Hi, I'm Francine. And I'm Carrie. We're two best friends who can't stop talking, usually about Disney stuff. Sometimes we have fascinating guests, and sometimes it's just us. But it's always positive and fun. We're happy to have you join our chat. Thanks for listening, and let's get started. More exciting than a birthday party or a parade or a circus. I wonder what it could be. Bird, what could be more exciting than a parade or a circus or a birthday party, huh, Bird? My bottle cap collection. Oh, Ernie, look at them all. Aren't they beautiful? My bottle cap collection. You want to take a look? Yeah. Oh, the... Be careful. Your hand's clean? Uh, yeah, sure, Bert. See, uh, see, yeah. see all these beautiful little babies there? Now, up here, yeah. see, there's a there's a raspberry smash, and there's a good old juice, and, and there's a, a yeah. hard one to find, a rhubarb delight bottle cap. Oh, yeah, Bert. Huh? Uh-huh. Huh? Huh? Well, I bet when you look at those bottle caps, you really get Bert. excited. Boy, I, I sure do. <laughs> and, oh, and you oh, may oh, notice, oh. you may notice that I got two, count them, Two prune pops. Huh? Is that great? <laughs> two, and I'm going to try and get a yummy eight, too. Oh, okay. This is That's, great. Yeah, well, uh, I tell you what, uh, Bert, uh, it isn't very exciting to me. It's not. <laughs> no. Oh, Ernie, well, it is to me. Yeah, well. Oh, yeah, I mean, after all, everyone's yeah. different. Yeah, I mean, you, so you like circuses, parades, mm. birthday parties, stuff like that. And me, I like bottle caps. <laughs> You know, it all depends on your point of view, right? Yeah, so well, Carrie, or should I say Bert? <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy, old pal. Oh, my goodness. When you sent me that clip this morning, honestly, I was crying. I was crying. And aside from the fact that I don't like parties and circuses, uh, I think we're Bert and Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're awesome friends so that's a good thing that we're Bert and Ernie oh my goodness he is so excited about that bottle cap collection and I'll link to the YouTube in the show notes because you almost have to watch their expressions <laughs> and I, I know they're I know they're puppets but <laughs> but they just like awesome. just the, the way they're looking at each other and you can see Ernie kind of sigh like oh we're gonna go through these again <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that happens to me a lot when I'm excited and want to talk about something and then the person I'm talking about <laughs> isn't too excited about it. Like yeah. your pin collections and your your keychain collections. You are a collector. So you mm-hmm. are like Bert. I think I think I I think that Bert now when I think back, like he's the goat of collectors, man. Like I think that when I was like six years old and saw that he had his paper clip, clip collection and his bottle cap collection. Like I thought, oh my goodness, collecting is awesome. Maybe that's where it all started. That's where it started. Maybe I don't have the collector gene. Maybe it's Bert's fault. (laughs) Maybe it's growing up watching Sesame Street that that triggered this in you. Maybe. And did everybody have Sesame Street or is this a Canadian thing? Because I'm wondering for our listeners, like from the UK, do they know Sesame Street like Bert and Ernie? I would hope so. I hope so. If everybody, not, uh, every, I'll like put everything it in this show when we grew up with Sesame it. Street, like that's all that I that like TV Ontario and Sesame Street was all that I watched. So like all of, you know, how I learned to count and sing and collect, all came from all came from Sesame Street. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, that was pretty funny. That was not yeah. the topic of the podcast, but no, we started talking about Bert and Ernie today. this morning. And um, I don't know how. Well, I think, yeah, I don't know how either. I don't even know how this came. So Carrie and I have like the weirdest conversations where sometimes we just go down a tangent and it's, um, I don't know. Well, we were talking about best friends and how like them being different and, and, and then you sent the clip and it was perfect <laughs> because, you know, bottle caps, pins, similar I try to get excited about your pins, but it's all right. You didn't. I try just... to. I try to tone it down sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you this week, pal? 
I'm good. We're only a couple of sleeps away from uh, California. Yahoo, yeah. Yahoo, Yahoo. I can't believe Yippee. it. Just last weekend, I opened the WestJet app and it said we were eight days away from our flight. And it, it was like, what? Seriously? Are we only eight days away? And now, like, we're in crunch time. Crunch time. We fly out on Sunday. <laughs> it's a feel, week away. Yeah. And while I am a last minute fly by the seat of your pants kind of gal, I'm really pushing it this time. Really pushing it. Like, we haven't even talked about, uh, like, what time do you want to get to the airport? Or how are we getting to the airport? Are we taking we'll a bus? A, like, a, a bus, a taxi, whatever. And we're in a group chat with two of our friends about the expo. And they were asking about how to get from the airport to the hotels. And you replied that we're staying at a hotel before we go to Disneyland. Mm-hmm. You didn't remember where? That? No, where are we staying? And have I paid you for that hotel? <laughs> <laughs> it's on, A, it's on the spreadsheet. B, you know about it. Oh my it. gosh, she has a spreadsheet. Like, I don't even know where the spreadsheet is. And I don't, I don't even want to look at it. I'm one, like... <laughs> What do I owe? <laughs> um, no, because oh we, my goodness, we're going. We're going an extra day. When we decided we were going an extra day, I just booked a hotel uh, near Disney that I want to try called Element. Ooh. It's a newer hotel. I want to have check you. It out. You've never been there. Mm-hmm. No. And is it near Disneyland or is it near the airport? No, near Disneyland. Yeah. Okay, so we have to leave LAX and get near Disneyland. Yep. And then which we'll is just usually the big issue. Mm-hmm. Because traffic can be, it can be like lovely, or you can spend an hour and a half getting out of the airport. Yeah, that's one of the things we were talking about in our little D23 group was the cost to get to and from the airport. Because before uh, the COVID came, there was ample uh, shared services. So you used to be able to do super shuttle and super shuttle might cost like $30 a person or whatever. So if it was just you, you jumped in the super shuttle, you paid a couple bucks and you got to Disneyland. But then that all went away. And I think, I don't even know if super shuttle operates there, but then um, it was private transfers and like private transfers, whether you have like one person or six people (laughs) cost like 130 to $150. Yeah. So, um, and I think, I don't think the shared services come back so then we're back to lifts which we were talking about taking ubers and lifts and um depending on the time of the day that could cost 60 dollars or it could cost 120 dollars. so when i was there with marie um earlier in the year and we were at universal for the day like we we weren't we didn't know when to go and we were looking at the app and that's what we saw like we ended up waiting till after dinner to take the lift to from the hollywood area to to cut to Anaheim because it was half the price so I guess depending on when you arrive and if you're like you have really no choice I suppose right like you're not going to be like nah just hang at the airport I'm just going to hang at the airport for another (laughs) five hours hours. (laughs) (laughs) well and yeah that's the thing though if at least if you do a flat rate you know Mm -hmm. you know like doesn't matter what time they pick you up it's going to be the same price yeah And I think the last time I came to the expo, I took a private transfer and it was a flat rate. And it honestly took us about an hour just to get out of the airport Mm. because the airport was so congested. Yeah, I find like the LAX, everyone says it's like crazier. You always hear that it's crazy. I find like the actual airport experience when you're in the airport, in the terminals, isn't that bad at all. Like usually you get through security in like minutes and you can get in and out of the airport fine. There's great dining and, you know, different stuff there than we're used to seeing at other, like Toronto airport. But it's more like when you're leaving, it's like like waiting outside and waiting oh, for your get- ride and seeing all of the people like, yeah, like it's crazy. Like they can't stop for more than like two seconds and, and you know, you have to take a shuttle to the Uber station to get your Uber if you do that or whatever. It's just like chaos out there. Mm -hmm. But I find the actual, like, departing and arriving is fairly nice. I I don't know. Knock on wood. I've never had any. I think it's just you. Because I got to tell you that all my experiences at LAX, I have not enjoyed it. Oh. Mm, I'm the opposite. Because when we get to, and maybe it's the flight home, but I've never managed to get a seat at my gate at LAX. I'm there 
a million hours early and there's no place to sit. Oh. They don't have enough seats for the pe- like the bums yeah, on the plane. Yeah, they are kind of small, I think, some of those areas. Like, and the thing for us, we always go to the same, like, I fly Air Canada, you fly WestJet. We're always in the same, like, I think in they the may be different arm. areas, but we're in the same, you know, we don't, we haven't seen any other, we've probably only ever seen two terminals in, in, <laughs> in, uh, in LAX. And maybe some of the other ones are way better. Maybe we're in the crappiest terminals. You never right. know. Right. <laughs> right. Maybe that's it. Anyway, but I so and I don't even remember really the arrival. All I remember is standing at the carousel waiting for my luggage for like an hour, uh, which really isn't any different than Toronto, and and then getting in the car to go. Right. So we have some logistics to figure out, Carrie. We Pete, have not worry figured about out. It. Just get packed. I'll take care of the logistics. Well, that's part of my logistics. <laughs> is the packing part? Are, are you read? You know, we we get on the call to record the podcast and I can see there's a suitcase behind you. Like, you're already, like, I asked you, is that your suitcase from Walt Disney World that's still, because that's how mine is. Mine right now is is on the floor in the disaster room that I have. And Mm -hmm. it's full of the stuff that I have not taken out from my Walt Disney World trip. Right. No. uh, Is that that what yours is? That's a that's my large luggage because I'm being bullied into taking a large piece of luggage. Correct. <laughs> Correct. You are. I will take that. Yes, please. So my carry on is in another location. It is empty from our last Walt Disney World vacation, but that's my my uh, full luggage waiting. So I've just thrown stuff in it like I would usually be packed by now because that's my thing. I'd rather get packed and figure it all out put my outfits all together, figure everything out, have it there, make my list of things I don't need to forget, things I need to do this week. And then at least at the last minute, I'm I like the big stuff's taken care of and I just have to think of the little things. Like usually at the last minute, I'm running to the bank to get a little bit of U.S. cash or like because I never I no remember US to do cash. that. Well, I have no U.S. cash. You might need a little I'll just go to the bank machine when we get there. Yeah. I don't trust my bank card and my bank to, to properly uh, debit money. From a bank mm. machine in the right currency. See? Really? I d- and I use my prepaid. I have a prepaid visa that I just top up. And then I I can do it online and I transfer the money onto the visa. That's fancy. Anyways. You need to get your... You need to start packing. Because mm-hmm. you know what's going to happen. You're going to wait till the last minute. And then you're not going to know what to do. And then you're going to throw all kinds of stuff in. And then you're going to be complaining that you pack too much stuff. Do they have hair dryers there? Because I don't want to pack my hair dryer. Yes. Okay. There's um, no hair dryers in California. <laughs> we can go to the At least Target. there's no humidity. At least there's no humidity. Yeah, not which is like, nice. uh, nothing like we're experiencing. We've experienced. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It was humid here, too. Like, we went to Florida and it was humid and then it was pretty My hair is out of control. Yeah. This summer, the end of the summer. But then now it's like kind of normal summer right now. Like it's a beautiful end of summer, breezy. It is. It is. Mm. Anyways. But the California weather, I'm looking forward to that. And I saw a post the other day about how the crowds were really low. I'm hoping that it stays that way for us. Well, I think, yeah, the kids go back to school, but they were saying too, like so many of the annual pass passes expired. So people might have chosen not to renew them. Oh, because so maybe... there's all that drama around the annual passes, right? Like they were expiring. So a year ago they came for sale and, and everybody jumped on and bought their annual passes. And then they didn't have any, they stopped selling them and they didn't have any information about renewal. So people's passes are starting to expire now because the one year. Um, happened. Oh, right. Because the one year happened and, and some then... of them weren't happy with the annual passes and their block out dates and all that. Like, how they use them well i think they and raised, the park reservations yeah like I, the top tier one was renamed because that's the one that there was like a there's a lawsuit or uh, about or whatever but yeah i think they made it so that all of the passes have blackout dates where the top tier one didn't have any blackout dates and they raised the price on it and i think they've just changed stuff like they're giving parking or parking discounts and they're giving genie plus discounts uh mm. with it or whatever but anyway so that's what they're saying that maybe perhaps it could also be that, um, you know, because it's the end of the summer, people should still be, you know, going to the parks that perhaps some people are like, no, I'm not running. Well, with Disneyland <laughs> being a primarily locals kind of park, 
it makes sense if if the if they're not renewing their annual passes then there would be less people there so i'm kind i'm looking forward to that yeah i would think though but by the time we get there it's not going to be the case because halloween starts so everybody well maybe (sighs) if if truly people didn't like loads of people didn't um renew their pass and maybe we will see it but halloween starts on september 2nd so i think that everybody that does have like i think it's more like the quiet before the storm i think that if you if you've been going that you're taking a break because you're waiting to go after because people like to go for those yeah those things i'm i'm not happy that our our like as soon as we get in the park it's gonna be all halloween because a it messes up my pictures my pictures are only good for the fall um and I don't know, just the the orange. It's just, it's not my thing. It's not my thing. But, um, Wait, well, it's, it's, uh, it's but awesome. We're going to see Yogi Boogie. We're going to, we're going to do all the things while we're there. Yeah. And go to the expo too. And go to the expo. So logistics wise, we are unprepared. Well, we have, a, we have flights, we have places to stay, we have our expo tickets. We did That's our expo, really what we need. We did and, our expo, our random selection process. process. Mm-hmm. So we've done all that. So I don't know what you're talking about. The logistics are in place. You, you, you need to pack. <laughs> <laughs> and understand the day that we're leaving, that that's the day that we're leaving. Beyond and that. And that's it. Beyond that, it'll all fall into place. Yeah, I think so. We're going to be there during um, Disney Plus Day, which is kind of cool, right? The, we'll be at Disneyland on Disney Plus Day. So they will. So Disney like... Plus Day is the day that Disney Plus uh, uh, like rolled out, the anniversary yeah. of Disney mm-hmm. Plus. Yeah. But I can't even remember. What did they do on Disney Plus Day? Maybe well, then they'll announce what's happening with the Disney Plus shows that I really liked that have just sort of gone quiet. Maybe. What happened to Big Shot? Well, maybe there'll be information about that at the expo too. It would yeah. be nice. And the, the Mighty Dis- Ducks, like they both just went crickets. Disney Plus Day, they have like some things are released on that day. And then at the parks, they do special things. Like I think that they let uh, people in the parks early. Like last year, they rolled out the blue carpet. Like when you walked into Disneyland, like the tr- like at the front with the train station, it was like blue carpet everywhere. Like they rolled out the blue carpet and they did stuff. Maybe they'll give us something. I don't know. Hopefully that a button. would be fun. Hopefully a button. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so excited, Bert. We're gonna get a button. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully a button. We're gonna get a button. <sighs> Anyways, so what else about the expo do we need to do? We need to worry about when we. Uh- I think I think for that part we're kind of we've got as much prep as we can. Yeah, Meaning I think we. Yeah, we've done our random selection, and now it's up to the the expo powers that be to tell us where we're going to go and what we get into. Yep, yeah, and see how crazy it is for doing virtual queues for the stores, and then we have to decide what we really want to do. And if we don't get the things in our random selection, we have to wait in standby lines and all that stuff. So. Right. I don't know. It seems and, like there's lots of stuff to do at the expo this year and only in only three days. <laughs> and we have, um, I don't know about you, but I don't have the expo app and they won't let you download it in Canada. Yeah. So I, I have to wait till we land there mm-hmm. and then I'll download it. Yeah. If you had the expo app on your phone, then it'll up, it'll update. Um, but yeah, if you don't have it at all, then you're kind of out of luck till you get. Until I get there. Can, download it yes mm-hmm. and the good news is that i have this portable hotspot that i bought to, i don't know if i told people on the podcast about it but i bought this portable hotspot for us so i can top it up it's prepaid and we'll have rather than using our own data or if our data is a little shoddy or the wi-fi shoddy we have data we're just gonna have it in our backpacks <laughs> why well, can't i can carry it in my backpack if we want um yeah so it's kind of like our insurance to make sure that we always have data. So it's cellular data from the States. Yeah, like I don't know how well, like in the convention center, like how well the data works all the time. But mm-hmm. you definitely need to have, you when you go to Disneyland generally. Disneyland uh, has horrible Wi-Fi. Yeah, like, well, that's the thing. I don't know. Like it's, I think to say that it has horrible Wi-Fi, I just don't think it has Wi-Fi. Like <laughs> they have Wi-Fi spots or they used to. Like I should check on the maps now to see if they even list them before they were Wi-Fi spots. spots. So it's not like Wi-Fi everywhere. You have to go to the spot to get the Wi-Fi. Yeah. 
Yes. And then I remember you being there and saying to me, I've got to go to my Wi-Fi spot if we're going to video chat because you yeah. couldn't. Yeah. But when the light bulb went areas. on and you realized that that's what they were, then it was not so bad. You could just go and sit in the spots where you wanted to sit to talk to somebody or whatever. But yeah, the convention center is a ginormous convention center. So, you know, there's got to be like when you're in the bowels of the basement. <laughs> In the bowels of the basement. The bowels of the convention center. <laughs> if the, I don't know that my uh, my data will will work the greatest there, but yeah, you you need your um, mm. like every, well, well, I think the app. I I'm I'm gonna be I'm interested to see how this will all work because like the app I think for D twenty three is just for information. Like I think that what I think that they're probably going to email us like QR codes for everything that we got into for or it's going to be loaded to our to our qr code that's going to be on our badge or something like i think that for all of the sessions it's going to be like that and then i think the um the stores like to get into the queues for the stores is through the disneyland app so there's that and then so i really do think the d23 app is information purposes only like i really think that it's going to be where we just go in to read what things are about and to figure out where like to wayfair where where we need to go where we yeah so i I, yeah i don't know that it's you'll need it for information purposes but i don't think we actually need it for like transactional purposes but we'll but we'll see i guess um yeah we'll see we have so we have so much to learn in such a short period of time yeah and with the expo it changes all the time right like everything like over the years as they've tried to embrace technology a little bit, like there's a little bit more, right? So even though we we um, got to change, like got to pick things last time to go into sessions, like they did our, the random selection process. So the process is totally different. And then now we have, they had um, stage passes last time where we, mm-hmm. we um, where we could get into certain things. I think we could even, we might've even been able, I don't know if on site, if we scanned into things, like if we wanted to get in, wait, I can't remember. But anyways, they had the stage pass thing. We did the stuff before, but then now, um, like I think they're still calling some of it stage pass, but they're but it's different. Like they they're trying to make it better. So, um, it's like you wonder if it'll ever get to a point where like they have it right, right? Like they'll be like, okay, well oh, the I RFQ so. works, this works, <laughs> that works, and then you know for events in the future, it'll just be the process instead of every time going and wondering. How it's going to work. How are they going like, to do it this time? Yeah, like yeah. they said, no basement overnight queuing, right? So, you know, if, are they really going to only let people in the building at six o'clock in the, in the morning? So does like, that mean everybody will be queued outside? It well, just... and if they did RF, well, they will. Like I, we, I've stood in outside queue lines early in the morning. So I don't know if they will, like, like if they're doing random selection for like the big sessions where people wait overnight then why is there like are they i guess people will stand in line to be up front so Mm. maybe that's maybe at six o'clock in the morning people will line up for like the 10 o'clock session and they want to be at the front of the line because then that means they'll be at the front of the right they'll be at the front of the ginormous room that it's in so maybe Mm. maybe they'll wait for that and maybe that's all that's required then and if you don't really you know care too much about that then (laughs) then you get in the line when you get in the line i don't know so yeah i don't know if it'll if it'll all share we're if gonna have so much to share not. after this yeah on how yeah. it all works and do you think we can record some snippets while we're there maybe it'll be noisy yeah so but i think people like when we record on location they yeah. th- we got some good feedback about the okay. the pop century podcast and i remember when we recorded once before in the parks we got some really good feedback about that well, maybe if there's some epic things that happen, we could stop and uh... we could stop and record snippets. People loved our Dayton Disneyana one where we were on the road really? and <laughs> you're on the road and recording from uh, on location. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll try. We'll we try. Can try. Yeah. We can try. Okay, so our our prep our prep for D twenty three podcast was basically a preamble of how many minutes of us saying that we're sort of kind of prepared you're prepared i'm not you haven't packed neither have i and we're gonna wing some of it but Mm -hmm. we do but we do have a new hotel that we're checking out while we're there so this will be two new things for me um because i've never stayed at the disneyland hotel so i'm extremely excited about that i'm very excited cool 
and I can't wait. We're going to do Trader Sam's while we're there because if you're staying in the Disneyland Hotel, you have to do Trader Sam's. I agree. Are, are we bringing bathing suits? Sure, yeah. Okay. I just, I don't know. Like, what what am I bringing? Do I need an umbrella? Mm, mm. I can bring one for the sun. You don't have to bring one. Your space is, you know, limited. My space is at a premium. <laughs> yeah. We won't yeah. need it. Like, it, yeah, I guess I really be... want to go shopping at the event. Like, there's so, not just the, the Disney stores, but all of the vendors that are there, too. There's there's so much good stuff. Lots of so, uh, yes pictures to take, too. Yeah, there's we need to visit uh, the Hallmark uh, booth for a friend. Friend, yes. And, he's uh, he's already asked if we could, we could check that out. We need to remember to visit the <laughs> Hallmark booth at the appropriate times. Yes. Just to set reminders for that. So I'm excited. Yeah. So it won't be long. We'll be on long. the plane and off to LAX. And hopefully you guys Fingers will crossed. all follow along at the end when we uh, when we report back. Our Carrie, shenanigans. I think <laughs> our shenanigans. I think there'll be lots of shenanigans. Yep. For sure. Yeah, well like well we'll have we're doing Disneyland before the expo because we flipped our dates. Ideally, yes. you do the expo first because then we're still on East Coast time and then we can be up bright and early without batting an eye. We're going to do Disneyland days first, so then we'll be tired by the time the expo comes. So, like, hopefully this yes. not having to wait all night long will be true because then we won't have to be up as early. But yeah, um, we'll that have lots my, of that Disneyland. That was my fault because I wanted to get home in time for my sister's birthday. Well, and not... really, we're getting home in the afternoon of her birthday. I'm going to be, you know... You're going to be, well... I, I'm going to be, be whatever. Maybe. I'll be sleepy. Um, and I'm just going to go straight there for cake. Um, I'll have, like, triple masked and, and mm-hmm. bathed in Purell on the way. And, uh, yeah. And then I'm going to try to take the next day off work, but... That's so a good far, plan. It's, you need so to... far, it's not looking very promising. I'm supposed to do to like an executive it. level presentation the next day. So, oh my goodness! Yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> oh, Carrie. Okay, we babbled. We have babbled enough. enough. Sometimes I feel like people are yelling at the at the thing, going seriously, you two, or they've just tuned us out by now. Maybe. Or maybe they're laughing and and saying, "Oh, come on, talk for longer." I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> Carrie, Hallelujah. I forgot to ask, They're done. I, I forgot to ask before we started. Do you have pixie dust? I do, actually. I do. Oh, you do. Mm-hmm. And? So I did. I, I received some uh, mail this week from our friend Ashley. She and I are doing a washi tape exchange. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, uh. stop encouraging her. <laughs> Is that why I was seeing all this washi tape stuff earlier? Maybe. When you were holding, yeah, maybe. Okay. So, yeah. So, she went into so what her washi. What is this exchange? Like, how does how does this work? So, she went in her washi tape collection. And so, uh-huh. and then she sent me some. So, washi tape is very, like, like, you can peel it off and, like, wrap it around something and it won't lose its stickiness. Like, washi tape is, is like, a special type of... It's not just a tape. It's a special type of tape. It's not like tape. scotch tape. Yeah, it's not scotch tape. It's sort of... You can move it... You can usually move it around or, like, it won't rip your paper sometimes. Or it, won't de- it won't destroy things. Like, washi tape is just wonderful. So it's not really tape. It is. It is tape. Anyways, so... Like, could it hold two things together? Sure, can. Yeah, absolutely. But then but it washi tape is good. It's decorative tape. It so like say you wanted to like say you had like jars in your cupboard and you wanted to like write what was in the jars you could use a piece of like nice little washi tape and then like get a marker and write on it like if you wanted to so it's decorative it's it's meant to decorate your journals decorate artsy, whatever it's for the artsy artsy people. right so so with washi tape I would like stick a sticker on the jar as long as you can <laughs> as long as you have something that's kind of not course like a piece of paper or whatever like a, a credit card not a credit card like a gift card like something that's you okay. know plasticky or whatever you you wrap the washi tape around it so I so she got some things that like these little cards or whatever and she's wrapped her washi tape different washi tapes around it um, so that I can have a sample of, of her washi tapes so I got Jeez. all kind. I should have brought them up to show you. I got all kinds of um, different washi tape. She's got Disney one. She's got cute kitty one. She's got all kinds of, of neat washi tape. And she gave me a sample of them and mailed them to me. So then oh. last night, um, I did the same for her. So I had found, um, 
she's probably going to, she's not even going to have the washi tape by the time if she listens to the podcast. So guess what? Your all washi tapes on the way <laughs> as soon as I get it into the, into the mail. Um, so I got, you know, um, you know, the, uh, um, sports cards, like the collector, the things you put, um, your sports cards in the plastic, the sleeves, sleeves, like they're yeah. hard. Like I've got the heart. So I, I got a couple of those and then I wrap my washi tape around those. And so I gave her, I have all kinds of Haunted Mansion washi tape and di- I bought all kinds of Disneyland washi tape. Like, I think that was my pixie dust like many months ago, like how I spent a hundred dollars yes. Canadian on, on your, Disneyland on your washi, washi tape. tape. Yeah. So, um, I got all my Disney washi tape and I've given her samples. So then I'm sending it back to her as a trade. So, you know, collectors do trade things like people trade pins one for one. They trade stickers. They do whatever, like. So this is just like a washi, a washi trade. So uh, it was fun. I got, and like, like I knew it was coming, but so I'm still, got all this washi I was still surprised thing. when I got my mail. I was like, Woo-hoo-hoo. and you're so excited. What have you done with it? Well, nothing yet. I was, I was <laughs> just looking at it, putting, oh. putting it in its spot. Like, cause you know, I have a look. Did my you washi put it tape next to your bottle cap collection and my, your, my and washi your, tape your paper dispensary, clip collection? My washi tape dispensary. I have it. I, I kind of figured out how to put her stuff in with our, uh, the stuff that I already have. So mm-hmm, that was my nice. pixie dust. It was, it's nice. awesome. Washi tape trades. Nice. Anyways. Very good. So what's your pixie dust? My pixie dust is I went in the office this week. Um, but while I was in the office, I met our friend Dustin for lunch. Ooh. So Dustin, he runs Steps to Magic, the the website Steps to Magic. And he's always fun to talk to about Disney stuff. And he's planning a trip. Um, so it was exciting. We were talking about what his plans are for his trip. But I got to tell you, Carrie, like it just reminds me, I have to I have to give myself something fun about going to the office because <laughs> I don't like going to the office. So, but that day I I went for lunch. I took an hour in the middle of the day. I declined meetings and everything. I said, nope, I'm doing it. Um, But then I almost got attacked by like 30 pigeons. (laughs) So if you've ever been in downtown Toronto, we are overrun with pigeons. Mm. And right where, so I was walking along Bloor, which is like the main street, one of the main streets in downtown Toronto. And as I was walking to the restaurant where I was going to meet them, there there was like it felt like 200 but it was probably close to 30 (laughs) pigeons on the sidewalk and I don't know if somebody had been feeding them or whatever but they were all congregated and then people were walking and of course as the people walk the pigeons start going crazy so they were all flying at me I had the bag like I had a bag with me I had it over (laughs) my head I'm trying to run to get into the restaurant like oh it was just oh it's I oh I hate the downtown pigeons (laughs) oh is this your pixie dust because I went to lunch. I know, I know. I'm just teasing. <laughs> but but let me. But everybody inside the restaurant, I think, got a, a good giggle too. Because watching you all, running with a bag over your oh head. Oh my gosh! Yes, the, I forgot about the. But the, the moral pigeons. of the story is, you need to take a break, and it's good to have a break with a friend it at lunch. It is. It is. So now, it was very good to do that. Did any of these pigeons come up to you and go, "Hey, mate, you got any chippies?" <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is that? You know that TikTok I sent you at the seagulls? Yeah. Oh my god! Oh, I sent yes. you that one. Yes, you did. Oh my <laughs> gosh! So seriously, Carrie, you the TikToks, man. My feed is full of cats and birds now. Hey, now mate, that you, you got any chippies? You've mixed it. In, you've mixed in some birds with the cats. Well, that's the thing. You were complaining that I was messing up your algorithm. So then I sent you the I sent you the some, birds. The bird one. <laughs> the guy that does the little cartoons with the birds. <laughs> hey, mate. Oh my gosh. Got any tippies? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, so the algorithm does listen because um, I do have a feed full of the stuff that you send me now. Thanks. You're welcome. (laughs) Well, we've had people message us that they've got uh, advertisements for um, your kitty litter. litter. Pretty litter. I, I have something to say about that. So I know that that's what happens. Like everybody's getting pretty litter. Like I lost count of how many times people have messaged me to like a photo of the pretty litter coming up in their feed. But um, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week, maybe a week ago, which is over a week ago, our cat, like we have a cat fountain. It was the Pagoda 1000 or whatever it was. (laughs) (laughs) And we've had it for like a decade probably. And it broke. Okay. 
so my, your so cat like, fountain broke? My cat fountain broke. And like, my cats aren't drinking out of a bowl. Like, right. they looked they at me and they, like, in solidarity, they're they're dry until I replace the cat fountain. Like, they're no like, joke. forget it. We, they're like, we are no. not. Like, I put bowls, like, I put, because yeah, we have the, uh, no. I have the fountain on top of a table. They need running water. Like, I put, I put the, I put a bowl up there. They're like, what are you doing? Like, we don't drink out of bowls. I put bowls by the food. They're like, no, we don't do that. Like, they do not want to drink out of the bowl. So I had to, like, act quick and get a new fountain. So I'm on Amazon. I'm asking a few people. Like, all, and I know months ago, I was getting ads for, like, the best pet fountain money can buy. Like, just like how you see the kitty litter ads. I couldn't find this. I was trying to find this um, ad. I was, like, I was, like, talking to my phone going, Oh boy, I need you a cat fountain. Not, if not. only I could find. If only, I was googling. I was googling cat fountains. I was on Amazon searching for cat fountains, oh and God. all I wanted was my Facebook feed to show me that dang cat fountain that it was showing me a couple months ago. Because it was like the best, you know, cat cats around the world are raving about this fountain. And I was like, and I looked at it back then. I'm like, oh, maybe I should just get a new fountain just for fun. And I didn't. And, and then do you think I do you think this cat found would come up? Oh my no, gosh. like I'm not even joking. I was talking, you know, because your phone listens to you, right? Like, I <laughs> maybe thought that, we need to get on a Facebook chat and talk about cat found. Well, I talked, I did talk to people about cat founds <laughs> on my Facebook. I was Googling it and then I thought, well, I'll give it like a day. Maybe like it'll pop up. It didn't pop up. Guess what happened like a day after I bought my cat fountain? You that dang the, cat found that, came that, up on my, see, on my feed. They're just a little too slow. Dang it. <laughs> so I didn't buy that fancy cat fountain. I bought I bought just like a cat at the flower one that's got like there's a flower on top and the water comes out. The cats love it. Cat. It's actually a very good cat fountain because you it's know it's important to have a good cat fountain. <laughs> it is it's a very good one. Like in the, like the short time we like we've been running in it actually mm-hmm. is probably better than the other one that we had. Mm-hmm. The Paco- the Paco- and where did, where Pagoda did you, 1000. <laughs> where did you buy the cat fountain? On Amazon? Uh, no, I actually bought it from PetSmart because I was worried like if it was crappy, then I could return it. Because oh, I had to smart. buy it quickly. Like I yeah, couldn't yeah. do very much research. Because, no, your cats were like, going to be dehydrated. My cats were going to be dehydrated. And, and <laughs> like they don't even want it. They, like, yeah, they they would have yeah. been dehydrated. So I had to move quick. I had a little bit of time. It I gave like it a, a cat emergency. <laughs> yeah, it was. I gave it like, you know, a couple of days. Like, you know, I was trying to research. I was trying to wait for the Facebook to show me the, the ad that yeah. I was looking for. Um, but it but, failed yeah. me. It failed me. There you go. So. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> okay, Carrie. Before we go today, I want to give a shout out to Bex. Yes. Uh, Bex has got some stuff going on in her life and uh, she's doing she's doing very well, but it's important that we, we give her a shout out, send her a little extra pixie dust and um, thank you for listening. And I'm glad that we can accompany you um, on your drive. So um, just some pixie dust from us to you. And thank you guys for listening and for all the ratings and reviews you've given us and um, for putting up with us all the way through the the podcast. Definitely um, share it with somebody you think might else might enjoy some of our ramblings and rants on cats and uh, Bert and Ernie. And we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to the Pixie Dust Fan Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Make sure you're following us on your favorite podcast player so you'll get a new episode every week. And find us on social media too. We'd love to hear from you. Till next time, remember, you are never too old to be young. Chase your dreams and design your own happily ever after.